Clam prop. Hey guys, it's Spence from Video Spence and welcome back to another lesson on how to make better videos and photography for your flying adventures. In the past lessons, I've taught many of you how to use the basic tools of Hit Film, Hit Film Express, which I wanna clarify is a free tool. It's not the only editor around by a long shot, but the reason that I'm using it is it is free and provides all those great high-end features, even for free, that you would otherwise have to pay for. Those include the video editing capability, sound editing, compositing, and even photographic adjustments or digital photographic adjustments. So my theory is by showing you this free tool and giving you all the techniques, and then later also giving you some higher end stuff, you're gonna be able to make amazing, really beautiful flying videos, flying images that you can share with your friends and family or even to just enjoy on your own. Today, I'm gonna to bring together some of the components that I've used in other lessons in a real world example. So let's go for a free ride here. And we're gonna first go over to trikepilot.com where I'm going to take a sample clip that was submitted by one of our users, Joe Glenn, who's been a fan here of the Video Spence project. And he's got some raw 4K uh, footage of a flight with his brother, John. Now, I'm not gonna actually use the 4K, I'm just gonna limit it to 720p because again, it's faster to edit. But just understand that with those great capabilities of the 4K cameras, like the GoPro Heroes and so forth, you can do some amazing stuff. And I recommend anybody drop on over to Trike Pilot and as an example, look at Henry, uh, Henry's recent video, which was his flying year in review. This is awe-inspiring, awe-inspiring stuff. Henry is not only great at setting up his cameras, but he's great at his editing, his music choices, and he just says amazing country that he's flying over. So check out this as an inspiration for what you can really do when you start to get good at doing this kind of thing. For now, what I'm gonna do is grab the URL. All I need to do is right click and say, open link in new tab. And I've already done that. And this is the original YouTube video. And what I wanna do is just copy the URL, because then I'm gonna go over to a free video downloader. I'm using right now distillvideo.com, but there's lots of other ones that you can use. And I just paste that URL in here, and then I click start. It will then give me some choices that I can do either right now online, or if I need to or want to, I can download some software to do it. I don't think you need to do the software, but if you want to, feel free to try out whatever they're offering. I can make no claims about what they're trying to sell you though. You'll notice it says 4K and 1080p, you need the software. We can go 720p for this example and just download it directly from the browser. And that's what I'm gonna do. Next, we're gonna go over to HitFilm Express and like before, start a new project. Here, we're gonna use new and we've already got set up for 1080p. Do not worry about the fact that the clip is only 720p. That has no effect on me teaching you what to do. But if you are doing this for real, you obviously would want the project size and frame rate to match the raw clips. So in that particular case, it would be a good idea if you brought in 1080p or 4K, make sure your project matches. Here, I'm just using 1080p for everything, just for expediency. I start the editing, and now I wanna use the import tool to bring in this clip. And I'll say media, and I'm gonna go over to my downloads folder where here is the actual clip. I'll make sure you can see that, that we just downloaded from YouTube. As before, the clip shows up in the actual trimmer window where I can adjust it and decide what I want to use or not. To make sure that I don't annoy you, I'm going to turn off the audio for right now. And we'll talk about the audio in this clip. Actually, I click the button Use Audio. I can, <laughs> I can actually use this audio or use the video. I'm going to use the video. Um, when I turn off the audio here, it actually doesn't have any effect on the trimmer. The trimmer is gonna actually do that either way. So my mistake on that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the whole clip. So I'm just gonna take it and put it in here and then properly shut off the audio. So now I can actually work with this without annoying you. Alternative to shutting off the audio, we can just grab the audio uh, level line and move it down. That would accomplish the same purpose. And you'll notice now we can scrub through the entire video and see it on the right. A couple things I want to point out. First of all, the clip itself is really nice, but it's just one camera. You know, Joe was not trying to make a statement here. In most editing situations, the best videos are going to come when you have two or more angles, simply because people are bored by watching the same thing. 
even if the scenery is beautiful, you'd be better off in this particular case. And again, I'm not criticizing Joe, I'm giving encouragement here. Take a couple flights or land and then move the camera from one wing to the other wing. Fly around some more. Move the camera to the nose. Fly around some more. Move it to the tail or the wheel. Fly around some more. In the early days, back in 2000, 2001, that's how I made my first videos. I only had one camera and it was really big and bulky and janky as I showed you in the first video Spence episode. And I would just literally, around the same time of day, so the sun didn't look different, I would just literally do some laps around the same spot with the camera in one position. Then I'd move it to the other and move around the, the same space and then move it and so forth. So that's what we would do here. I have a trick that I'm gonna show you which is almost as good. It won't get us the nose shot or the tail shot, but we can use the mirror image capability and at least get kind of like a pseudo two angle shot. Next is I wanna talk about the exposure. One of the things that's nice about this clip is it shows some great fall colors, but it looks to me to be a little washed out. So the processing here I like to do first. And what I'm gonna suggest is we just use some of the basic um, filters or effects that we talked about before. And in order to do that, we're gonna go over here to our effects library. And remember we talked about the fact that I have some presets that I like to use, and I call them the Spence, right? So I can actually use those directly, or I can use some of the built-in ones, the ones that come directly from uh, HitFilm. In this particular case, what I'm really looking for is I wanna actually make the, the scene a little more contrasty. I wanna make it a little darker. So for that, I can actually just go over here and I can go over to color correction and I can say something like color balance or brightness and contrast or a combination of the two. So I'm gonna drag this one first over to the video and then it's going to give me the ability up here in the effect to adjust the brightness and contrast. Let's just slide up the contrast a little bit and let's take the, contra the brightness down a little bit. And this may seem a little excessive, so I'll test it and make sure that it's actually not too much in certain areas. But because this is sunset and this is fall, it actually will help a lot to make it a little darker and get rid of that washed out effect. You'll notice also that when I increase the contrast that the colors of the trees pop a little bit. Now if I want, I can also do some of the color balancing things and shift a little bit more towards what I call the twilight colors. So I'm gonna drag this on board and then in the color balance, I can adjust all of these things, shadows, midtones, highlights. Don't worry about that for right now. But what we want to do first is preserve the luminosity. And that means that we're going to shift the colors, but we're not going to make everything proportionally darker or lighter. And here what I'm going to do is start with the shadows. And I want to shift a little bit more towards the reds because it's fall. And I want to take out a little bit of the blues. And I can bump up the greens a little, see if that helps a little punch those greens. It's very subtle, but you can see it in the areas like this. And then I can do the same if I want, if I feel that it would help in some of the midtones. The difference between the shadows and the midtones is the shadows are the dark areas, the highlights are the light areas, and the midtones and kind of in the middle. Let's actually go over to the highlight area because I wanna like maybe bump up the blue in that sky a little bit. And again, this may or may not work so well. You notice the water was punching a little bit. And let's scrub a little bit and see how that looks. Now, I'm not saying this is like, wow, this is awesome, but notice the difference between the original, which again, has a very, very high amount of sunlight washing things out, and roughly the same area here on the timeline here. I'm not saying it's better. In fact, I would maybe turn the brightness up a little bit, but it definitely feels, in my opinion, like a little more uh, colorful you know, like a Disney movie or something. You'll notice on the trike in particular, you really see the highlights and so forth. Next is, let's do a mirror image. Now this is gonna be funny because there's not that much we have to do here, but we're gonna literally take the clip, okay, and we're gonna right clip, right click and copy. I'm gonna move my timeline scrubber over and then I'm gonna right click and say paste, or I could just do control V to paste it. Either way, the point is, we wanna make a duplicate copy of this clip, right? All right, so let's do that here. Copy, and then paste here. Now the problem, of course, is that we don't wanna show two of the same clip. So let's transform it by flipping the image on its x-axis. I think it's x-axis, x, y, 
I'm not sure. I, I got to double check. I'm pretty sure X is horizontal. Let's just say it is. I think it is. So what we want to do is select the clip. And then what we're going to do is go over here to the controls under transform. And we open it up and we see that there is the scaling. Normally, this is uh, locked together. This is make sure that the X and Y, the horizontal and vertical, are locked together and both change proportional. We want to break that and make sure that we can independently change the scale just of the horizontal, which I think is the X. You guys correct me later. If I click on the scale, which is the first number, that's the X, that's the horizontal. The second is the Y, the vertical. Click on the horizontal and do negative 100. Ta-da! It's effectively just saying, rotate that bad boy around its axis. If I wanted to, just to show you, I could do it for the vertical as well, although that'd be a little silly. It would be like, inverted flight, the planet is upside down. I'm gonna do it negative 100, horizontal. Now what do I have? I've got two clips, same pilot, same everything, except we can maybe mix and match these. So let's do some basic slice and dice. First thing I wanna do before that though is let's get rid of the audio because the audio is just the sound of the engine going with the wind noise. It's of no use here. That wasn't Joe's intent, obviously, when he recorded it. So let's just get rid of it because we can later do something else with music and so forth. So what we do here is we want to unlink. And you can't unfortunately see that when I put my mouse there, but there's an option. Unlink. There we go. Now we can selectively delete the audio. Unlink. Selectively delete the audio. Now, we've got only the video. We have two clips. If I want to keep it straight, I can also rename each clip. That would make it easy but I don't think I necessarily need to do that. I just want you to know you could technically rename the clip if you had a lot of clips, and that way you wouldn't be wondering, is this the left or the right? Obviously, you can also look on the screen. Next is we're gonna move this uh, up to timeline two, just so I can keep track. And we can slice and dice this randomly, it's not important. I'm gonna use my basic slicing tool, and this is just because we're not really doing anything magical. We're just gonna give you the example and we'll slice and dice the other clip. Now let's mix up the clips a little bit. And the reason I did the two timelines was just so it's easier to kind of do this thing. I'm, I'm moving stuff around like tiles on a puzzle board. And we'll see how this works out. Let's look at the results of this basic editing. These are just butted clips same images, but just inverted, color corrected. But now let's see how it looks like. Let's move it faster a little bit here. Switch to another angle. Now, one of the things I want you to understand is, look at how simple that was to get the results. It's the single clip but it's just inverted, so it looks like you have two cameras. Nobody looks at the ground and cares what's on the ground. See that? Let's do another one. One angle. Oh, we're gonna be looking for me. It <laughs> doesn't even make sense, because it's not even the same thing. You were flattened one uh, and you're in a turn in another, but you get the idea, I hope. Here's the sunset view, and now you're from the other angle. Super interesting, right? I also can see that it's a little dark on some of these, so I can highlight all of these, and I can go back in, and I can do my color correction and fix it. If I find that any particular clip has too much of an effect, I could just go back and reduce or change uh, the effect entirely. What I can do here is just turn off the brightness, or I can just selectively go in and say, yeah, you know what, I gotta bump up that brightness a little bit in this one particular clip, and maybe I've turned down the contrast a little bit. So you can tweak the controls. Now, let's talk about the audio. I'm not saying you need to put the audio on here, but it would be much more interesting, right? So let's get some free music that's royalty free from YouTube and add it into this clip. For that, we're gonna go over to YouTube royalty free music. And there is a library that I talked about from day one called the audio library. I can get any image and any, or I should say any music that I want. And I'll just use it here as me without having to worry about, am I stepping on somebody's toes? So you can select them by genre, you can do sound effects and so forth, right? If I was looking for mood, I could look for angry, bright, calm, dramatic, funky, right? Let's do something that's, uh, I don't know, let's do inspirational.
Let's refresh the page because it seems like it's locked up here a little bit. There we go. Sometimes when I'm making the videos, the YouTube gets a little a hankering. We can listen to it. Okay. Not saying that's great, but let's just use it for expediency. We're going to download the file and then we're going to import this into our project. Same as before. We're going to use the media import and then ready, set, go. And now what we can do is if we want, we can put it in the clip uh, trimmer and play with it. But in my case, I'm just going to wait till it's imported all the way and I'm going to put it onto the timeline right below the video so that we've got it as the main audio track. It takes just a second if the video is, sorry, if the audio is long, maybe it'll take, you know, 45 seconds or something, but it's just processing it into a ready to use format. Now I can drag this down. And again, we're not going to talk today about how to time your edits, but I will talk in another video about how to make a music style video where the images really line up well with the changes in the transitions in the music. For right now, just the basics. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use my basic pointer that has, again, this ripple editing tool. I'm just going to drag this to match the ending. Then what I want to do is actually make a fade out at the end of the music. I can also do a fade out at the end of the video. How do I do that? Well, a couple ways we talked about. The easiest way is you can use your pointer and just go to the line and you can just click on the particular line and you can edit it there, right? So for example, if I wanted to edit this clip and uh, adjust the fade out, I can just go ahead and literally divide it and drag the line down. Another way to do that would be to use the transformations we talked about in the last, which is crossfade or fade. So I'm going to use those just because I taught you those. I'm going to drag that to the end. And I may have to adjust that to make sure that the time of it is right. Oops. Let's do that again. Let's do fade. And let's listen to that. It's too loud. I'm going to lower the volume overall. And it just fades out at the end. You notice. Okay. So if the volume is too high, like you heard, grab the line and we can move it up or down a little. What we're looking for is the peak meters to just touch the red. They should be like literally hitting green and then hit red occasionally. So watch on the right side. So I think the problem is my volume here, I'm going to lower that a bit, is a little loud. That's actually right where it wants to be, which ironically is right where we started. So make sure that your speakers on your computer are not too loud and trust the audio meter. Same thing is let's put a fade out on a fade in on the video itself. So for this, we're going to use transform video. And we're going to do very simple. We're going to do um, dissolve. Okay. And I'll do um, cross dissolve. Cross dissolve just will fade to black when there's nothing else at the end of it. So let's see what happens. Ta-da, goes to nothing. If I wanted to, I can also do that at the beginning and add a cross dissolve at the beginning. Just drop it in there. And now it will start out basically the same way with sort of from black into the video. And I can do the same thing. I didn't do it first, I should have. I can do the same thing with the audio. I can put a fade at the beginning. And let's scale this up a bit so you can actually see those, see that those are adjustable. I can make them bigger or smaller. But let's see how this looks now. Right? Not too bad. I think the first clip may be a little long. So what I'm going to do for the first clip is I'm going to use my basic pointer tool that again has this ripple effect. I'm going to just drag this clip and make it a little smaller. Now you notice that left a hole. So maybe I should instead use the ripple editor. We talked about this before, right? I can use either the slip tool, I can use the slide tool, or the ripple edit. The ripple edit is nice because what it'll do is move everything along with it. And I like that better. Now the only thing we want to make sure is that we adjust the length of the audio at the end because these things are not linked together at the moment. They're independent. If I wanted to, I could link them together just like I unlinked them. 
I could select everything by basically highlighting them with my left mouse button or saying select all. Let's do it this way. Use the pointer tool. That's the first step. Okay, select all. And then I can relink these here. But I'm not going to bother with that. Instead, what I'm going to do is just independently, because in the event that I want to make another edit, I can just shorten this up. Now let's hear and see how this sounds. Now I'm not doing this in the video, I promise you, but do you notice how right there was the moment when the music shifted? It had one verse, do, 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 do. This is where I would make the edit. So in this case, I'm just gonna show you in a really simple way. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna grab my ripple edit tool. This is where I would normally take the video and I would move it to that point where the music changed, okay? And by doing it that way, I end up with an effect that matches the music. Let's see how the transition looks and sounds now. how it hit right on that spot. Now let's do an export and I'll share this with you guys as a downloader. You can just watch this as part of this video. Let's use the export tool here. We're going to do the full contents and once again I had some junk left over. Let's get rid of the old one. Let's remove that task. Let's just take this one. Let's remove all of these tasks and start from scratch. Go here. We're going to say start export. Start export. And it's a short clip. We're going to export it and then I'll make this available for you guys to download over at trikepilot.com. Uh, essentially, we've taken a really nice initial clip, we've converted it into two views, compared the contrast and the brightness, fixed it up a little bit, got rid of the noise from the natural wind sound, grabbed a free audio track from YouTube, put it in place, showed you a couple of the tools. I, I kind of went fast over a few things, but showed you even the basics of how you know, we're going to talk later about making the video edits match up with the sound edits for something when you're particularly using a nice, let's say, soundtrack. It really adds to the effect, and I'll go into more detail on that later. But for right now, use this as an example to get started. I'll also save the project file for those of you who are interested and who are joining over at Trike Pilot. You can just download that for free over there from the members area. If you have any questions, please leave me comments. I hope you will subscribe if you like this kind of content. And as always, give me your feedback, good, bad, or otherwise. I'll see you on the next video. Clamp prop!